oh wow these bands that are legit now are huge and that i listen to it's name check us or whatever or something like that that's the ultimate compliment for an artist i think that so that must be kind of a trip but like the environment has been a band for you know 20 30 years yeah. and um there's still work to be done there's still a whole like other fan base still coming in it's Dude, I mean, never heard it, right. Yeah. Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. Klaus. You Holy moly. Good. What's up, man? What's up, bruh? Well, today is a very extremely special episode for myself, and I am honored to have one of the heaviest bands on the planet, arguably the heaviest band on the planet, The Bowerment. I'm, dude, I'm stoked to have you guys. Thank dude, you. Thank good you for the here. opportunity. Dude. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, I guess by coincidence, uh, your bass player... Dave lives pretty close to here, so that actually worked <coughs> out pretty damn good. Yeah, we got to rehearse yesterday, which was cool. Yeah, gave yeah, us an excuse to out here, yeah. come to L.A., hang out, and yeah, jam, and hang out with you. Yeah, LA. dust off the cobwebs. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's been a minute, so <laughs> we needed it. Even, even <clears> when you're on it, you still need to kind of like put in some, some time. It, it's funny Absolutely. how quick it, it goes away. Like We haven't jammed in like, oh no, a while, then... Like, oh, should we like touch it up. Gonna touch up some stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, well, luckily we uh, play death metal and uh, kind of <laughs> cover up some <laughs> some stuff, you know. Extra distortion. Or, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I do. Down tune that's a lot. Down tune, extra distortion. Yeah. Yeah. That that is literally what I do. Touch <laughs> a little bit more 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 gain and boom. <clears throat> exactly. You're not gonna hear the little little things. So. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, so you guys were going. <clears throat> so you're gonna be on tour with Ingested. And that's going to actually be coming here. And I was fucking pissed <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to be out of town. Yeah. Oh, no. Do on your own, do doing I'll, your own thing. Yeah. I, I was pissed. And uh, I was like, wait, <clears throat> is it day up? Because I was going to, I was literally going to fly back out here. Oh, wow. And, and we yeah. I was like, I was planning, but I have to talk. <laughs> I have to. There's no, there's out, I'm not going to not talk to him, but it was literally the same day on, it was, uh, uh, May 20th yeah. like literally that day we have a show here and then we have a show literally May 20th I'm like I can't obviously I can't make yeah. it happen but then uh, I believe I was talking <clears throat> to to you Brad yes uh, via IGDM mm -hmm. and uh, made, made it happen so again I really appreciate you guys being here yeah thanks dude yeah we're, we're hyped I've been talking to like I said Mark for a minute mm -hmm. Hallman and um, I've been a fan of you guys forever so I'm like Are you serious? yeah oh, oh yeah goodness. dude cause like that, I mean, people get surprised or something by like whatever old school death metal bands or '90s death metal bands. Like, I've always like been one of those guys that like, kept up with the trends and whatever bands are playing. One like the new wave of like death core death metal bands. You guys in Whitechapel, and like um, you know the the early 2000s. What to me was like okay, where what's the evolution of brutal death metal? Kind of where's it going? And you guys were that first wave of like, dude, that's fuck. It's different, but it's just as brutal. You guys got the chugs and the heavy shit, and it's like. That's legit to me. It's fucking awesome. I was stoked about it. So, and still, you know, I was a fan, especially the the first first two records. Um, <clears throat> Whoa. Yeah, dude. I was, I've been listening to you guys forever. <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah, that was always kind of a thought. Like, you know, they do they even like like the that core stuff or like or, or are, they, do they, are they listening to right. it? You know. I mean, there uh, there's I was, definitely. I was, I was always curious about it. You know. Yeah. There sure are purists in in the scene. They're like, sure. oh, yeah, death core. And I'm like, I've never. I mean, I don't think most people listen to the one genre of music 24 mm -hmm. seven. They listen to the other stuff. I do. I mean, I always have. So I appreciate as long as it's just heavy. I'll listen to it. That's yeah. kind of my only Rick rule. Isn't it kind of a trip where you know now you guys have uh, have hindsight to where like look what we fucking did like like what like what the environment did has started this whole wave of I guess you could say slam you know like again you just spoke about you know us thank you for that and uh like the Whitechapel the Death Court thing to be more exact but like that came straight from the environment like like straight up right. 
you know. And that's something that, I learned later on is like talking to you guys and like when I would listen to you, I was like I'd hear elements of what we did or what we were doing mm-hmm. years earlier. I was like, they must may have listened to us or something. And I talked to you or like a, a despised icon. I talked to Eric and and. Uh, those guys from Despise, and they told me that. I mean, they mentioned it a million times. Like, yeah, they listen to Old Devourment. That's why they did some of the slam parts in their in their songs and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I can hear it now that you tell me. It's like okay, so they did mm-hmm. listen to us, and we had some kind of impact. And it that's rad, right? It's like mm-hmm. bands I listen to now. It's like they say that we did something that they thought was cool enough to be influenced by or whatever. And it's like yeah, yeah it's it's cool perspective to like you said now, like twenty or thirty years later removed, go. Oh wow! These bands that are legit now are huge, and that I listen to it's name check us or whatever or something like that. That's the ultimate compliment for an artist, I think, for me anyway. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned like you know the bands are now you're you started to to hear about it. You know, oh wait, you know they did this part because of you right. guys. I mean, that so that must be kind of a trip. But like, you know, you, the environment has been a band for you know twenty, thirty years, yeah. and um. There's still work to be done. There's still a whole like other fan base still coming in. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, never heard it, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, because you know, bands, things like this, are people are going to hear like you know, oh, at like the bar, I mean, and people, you'll be, which we we experience too. Like you know, people forget who the OGs are. You right. know, we have to still like continually like put like the narrative out there and like you know, p- like, you know, put it out there. And bands like us are still you know, inspired by you guys. And I think there's still going to be waves of Absolutely. bands that are going to be listening to you guys. And therefore, if that's happening with bands. It's going to be fans. You know, yeah, which means you know that's you gotta, it's gotta tour. Exactly, you just gotta get out there, put your stuff in front of people, and and hope they like it or they don't or whatever. But just getting, like you're saying, we're playing with you know a deathcore band or whatever, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of those fans <laughs> that love that band, you know, have never heard us or heard of us before, and they may mm-hmm. get exposed to us and go, yeah, I like this band, and this band does something similar. And they do it well. I'm gonna I'm gonna check this out when I get home or buy their CD or whatever. You know that wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. And but it happened to us too. Like like the influence of the deathcore bands and brutal death metal. It's like for us. Like the reason I started Devourment was out of the idea. I was listening to early Dying Fetus and early mm-hmm. Suffocation and stuff. So that was to me. It was like you know I, those bands I see as direct influence on that. And then it just kind of it's any evolution of any musical genre, right? That keeps pushing boundaries or whatever. Yes, because the bar met formed in '95, uh, correct? Technically, ninety yeah, '95. We didn't really start playing together with the lineup that was like on MTD till '97 or so. But yeah, right. early mid mid '90s, mid late '90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I kind of count like, you know, I, we we probably have very similar stories. Mm-hmm. How uh, I think like the band starts when like you have like a band name <laughs> and like we are a band. You know, yes. so it could be, you know, like, I guess like that to some people that, that year might kind of go, you know, like, like back and forth. So like, did like the name, the environment, like, okay, this is 95. Yes. Okay, cool. That's literally how it happened. It was surrounded by, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, I, let's, I, I, let's hear about it, dude. Yeah, okay. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'll just bust out real quick as fast as I can. So I moved to Dallas in like the 93, 94. I, I joined a, a local death metal band. It was kind of 90s. It was like playing death covers and stuff and a couple of originals. Mm-hmm. And it was called uh, Kill Switch, uh, which is kind of funny now. But anyway, mm-hmm. and then I joined, and I was like, I'd just been exposed to like too many mutilated and stuff like that. And I wanted to get heavier than mm-hmm. death. I love death, but and I was like, okay, let's change the name. It's kind of push heavier, so I changed the name to Met- Necroside, <laughs> which mm-hmm. is whatever. It's cool when you're 19, I guess. And then um, <clears throat> I got this, found this guitar player named Braxton. Had him join the band. We were kind of on the same wavelength. Like wanted to be more brutal, heavier. Mm-hmm. And we started listening to Pyrex's Sermon of Mockery a bunch. Mm-hmm. And that like was a huge influence on me and him to like push the band. And we did it, and we uh, made like a record with that, and it was cool. But then I had this whole idea. I wanted to just start from scratch and make like the most brutal death metal band I can ever possibly make. So that was just started with an idea I had. And then one day I was just talking to him. I was like, I have a name just popped into my head, Devourment. I was just like, I told him, and I was like, what if we call it Devourment? And he's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. That was literally it. Me and the guitar player Braxton was the original, original Devourment, <laughs> technically. So it was based around an idea of just like, because I loved the brutal death metal, all the stuff I was listening to, early 90s stuff, uh, Dying Fetus, Internal Bleeding, Pyrexia, the New York and stuff. And um, But I just wanted to like, take that and push it even more brutal if possible, you know, down tune. And what 
pull out all the skank beats and stuff that I thought was kind of filler stuff. Mm-hmm. That was like the only rule I had. It was like I just didn't want to play a bunch of Slayer Slayer beats. Of course. <laughs> so I wanted blasting. Oh, and Cryptopsy. That's where I got the hyper blasting stuff. So I wanted like the speed of Cryptopsy and the brutality of like Dying Fetus and stuff like the early Fetus. So that was Devourment. And then we started and then, you know, Braxton fell out of the way. I got a new member. And the, the original the, that we recorded the demo uh, was I got a new singer named Wayne Knup who's passed away, but he's, it was amazing. And he had a friend who was a guitar player, so I needed a guitar player named uh, Brian Wynn. Uh, we called him Brain. Um, so we all hooked up, jammed one time, and like, that was it. It was like, that was devourment. That was the sound we were going, it was just grimy, sludgy, the low tuned, heavy, brutal, chuggy stuff that we did with the hyper blasting. And that became, we <clears throat> immediately said, yeah, this is something, we're onto something. So we recorded a demo, three song demo called Impaled, mm-hmm. and that was so well received. Like everybody, you know, locally in Dallas was ever like, "Dude, this is there's something here." So that kind of like pushed us. Like the little first show we ever played was just me, Brian on guitar, and Wayne on vocals. We had three piece band, and we only had three songs, and we were opening for Dying Fetus in like '96 or something in Dallas. Oh wow! Before Dying Fetus is who Dying Fetus is now, and uh, we yeah. So we only had three songs. We play, had to play them like. Twice, <laughs> so we played like three songs twice. That's Our, sick. <laughs> to fill out a set, but holy moly! And there was probably like thirty people there, but it was that was like our first show show, and that's kind of. But yeah, it was the whole thing was born out of an idea and a name. So, so right out of the gates, you had it in like you had like a vision, and like you had it in your head, like we want to uh, push it to the limits as far as like heaviness. Like this needs to be like over the top heavy. Yes, this, this has to be. Absolutely. And it wasn't out of like an ego or competition thing. It, yeah, was sure. just, it was just because that's what I always gravitated to. Like my mm-hmm. natural progression to metal. I listened to thrash and I found death metal and found supple turn. I was like, Ooh, this is heavier. This is heavier. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, that's just what I thought sounded the best. Sounded amazing. I just wanted the heaviest music we could possibly make. Cause like I would hear these bands. I was like, it's almost what I want to hear, yeah. but it's not exactly that. And I think I can take that and make it something else and filter it through okay. us. And it becomes something different, right? So it's like you take your inspirations, but you play it. And it's not a copy. I mean, unless you're doing covers or something, but you filter it and you write and you listen. You're inspired by and you become what we became, I guess. Unintentionally or intentionally, sort of, you know. And that's mm-hmm. still the formula, you know? Exactly. It's still That's still mm-hmm. like the driving vision between behind Devourment is just to be the, to write the most brutal, heaviest, disgusting death metal we can, period. Well, I'm here to say mission accomplished. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's funny how yeah, uh, like uh, you just you just mentioned like that little formula. You know, we we do some some something very similar. Like it's funny how you get older. Like you kind of you might lose it and you try to go back to like what made it good in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, you know, we. I mean, I do it pretty often. Yeah, you know, because what with this is this because it's it stems from like who who you are really. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, how, you know, how do we make this shit sick? It's like, well, you know, let's, let, let's go back to where, you know, that innocent first thought, you know, make the heaviest shit possible. Wait, I'll call it the bar, man. <laughs> you know, that's fucking, that's fucking great, man. Thanks. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it was cool. It was like, yeah, I keep like, it sounds pretentious or whatever, but I like tr- keep trying to push it that it's like, it's about an artistic vision or an aesthetic about a sound mm-hmm. and, you know, this kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. So that's what it was all created around. It's not created around just like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to start a band and write some songs. It's like I have this sure. idea of what I want to hear sonically, you know, in, in, it, in its entirety, like how thick it is, yeah. how fat it is, and how heavy it is, and hooky and catchy and all the other stuff. That's another thing I loved about when you had Glenn Benton on is like he emphasized hooks and mm-hmm. like, you know, catchy things and yeah. rhythms and melodies and death metal, which I think is a key part of good songwriting mm-hmm. that I think a lot of some modern bands are, that are amazing bands but overlooks maybe some of the songwriting song craft ac- sure. aspects of death metal so but that's another thing we focused on and why i think we have like in within death metal somewhat memorable songs you know yes. or like a cannibal does or a deicide does you know mm-hmm. anyway that's yeah, just it, philosophies <laughs> agreed yeah it's it's uh it's funny not a lot of bands or artists talk about it that way but it, it does start with a vision first you know we're very uh, similar in that way and i was curious like you were you guys are so focused and so around the groove where mm-hmm. even to this day is lacking in like maybe like modern death metal or like 
the mid 2000s death metal to late 99s death metal like you just yeah out of the gates did you, did you get any kind of backlash at all because it was so like groove nothing what do you think no i think the human mind wants to move their head when you're at a show so mm -hmm. and that's 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 part of that vision is we want to be able to see people moving we don't want people just kind of stand there watching you know intricate guitar playing or whatever it's yeah. to us right. that's not quite as important as the as the song per se yeah. um so yeah. yeah it's always been about that groove um i've actually had people tell me we're like the pantera of <laughs> development of, or, or of death metal before that's a compliment but, to me yeah absolutely yeah. um it's it's all about the crowd movement, you know. Yeah, it's about making people want to get up and move and slam or mm -hmm. hit or punch or whatever the heck. And it's yeah. and as a musician, I can appreciate good musicianship and technical stuff and sure. But that's not what I'm trying to listen for as a listener. I'm trying to listen to something that grabs me sonically or melodically or mm -hmm. something that rhythmically that like makes me go, oh yeah, that's hell yeah, dude. You know, that's that's just so brutal. I just I, I got it hit something or <laughs> not like whoa did you see that you know sick arpeggio he played there <laughs> it's like uh, that's cool but that's not what i'm listening for yeah. um but yeah it no we never had any like you said we never had any um, interesting backlash per se because mm -hmm. and that's another thing it's like we never i think that was just natural we always just gravitated towards groovier heavier parts for over mm -hmm. like i said skank beats or fast just constant fast stuff or mm -hmm. Because to me, that's where the meat of a song is, is like a some kind of rhythm. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm coming from the drums and I'm always looking for groove or I feel groove in everything. You're just a caveman. Yeah, I'm total caveman slammer yeah. of some ca caveman beats and caveman mm -hmm. grooves. Yeah, it's all, you know, basic. Yeah, that explains your your longevity. Was that was that a, a lyric or what? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get that a lot today. That's sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really explains like the longevity of the environment. Really focusing on on the group and making people move. Yep. You know, uh, you'll be surprised how many bands don't do that. You know, oh, so yeah. it's, it explains like you know, anyone could write you know a sick song, but you know, try lasting twenty, thirty years of being in a, yeah. in a sick band. People still talking about you and wearing wearing your shirts and still moving at at shows. I, yeah, know? I think that's why we've always had. I felt like. Again, not a, a calculated move, but why we've had kind of our own niche inside death metal and brutal death metal is like, yeah. there are some bands that focus exclusively on groove. There's some bands that focus exclusively mm -hmm. on tech, but there's not one that kind of blends it, I feel, in a way that we do it. I mean, Suffo does uh, really you know amazing stuff. They're super technical and fast, and they have, I mean, mm -hmm. they basically invented the slam riff. But we did, yeah, maybe put more emphasis on that. And I think... I mean, not to be, again, the pretentious artist thing about like, we always wrote music for us. We what mm -hmm. we wanted to hear, not what we give a shit what anyone thought of. That's why I think it was so surprising when we did our first album. It kind of within that sphere, within that world, it kind of blew up or took off, or people seemed to resonate with it. Is that we wrote this stuff completely for us, not giving a shit if anyone liked it or not. Just this is the music we wanted to make for us. And that pe that other people said, no, that's amazing. I've never heard anything like that, or no band's doing this mm -hmm. the way you're doing it. And it's like it's just the ultimate affirmation for you know doing your own thing as an artist or a creative person, you know, within music or whatever. Is like if you have a vision, you do it, you execute it, with you know, blocking everything else out, and then the people just come. You know what I mean? With it, it's like because people can tell if an artist is genuine or fake, or they're playing, yeah. pandering, or playing to an audience or something, mm -hmm. right? Versus they're just doing their thing, and like I like the thing they're doing, you know. And it's because we had there was you know so many bands out of Dallas at that time we were playing with shows with and stuff. They were doing records and they were great too, but they maybe were a little more derivative or didn't have as quite a, a unique niche or idea about how to do that kind of stuff and we kind of felt like we did and it kind of worked out for us I guess that way that people singled us out out of all those bands not as being the most technically proficient or best band but like mm -hmm. the songs were there mm -hmm. and the idea was there that maybe wasn't in other places you know even then you could still single out you guys <laughs> even as it has such a identifiable sound 
right. it's still like oh that's that's the bar I'm in. yeah it's still it can't it's <laughs> like and uh, you got you, you guys touched on like you know like like, like the caveman like just the, the very primal and i definitely hear that in your music right you know and it's because that, that that's the kind of like, the toughest thing to do yeah you know I agree. But, uh, um, that's that's a good point. Like, because I mean, people joke around and say that it's like the caveman riffs and sure. slam and yes, it's basic. It's you know four four chugs and bobbing your head and all that stuff. And it's like, but I think again, what may have separated us is that we we wanted to play dumb, low brow, heavy music. Yes. But the way we did it and the way we wrote it, we were very meticulous and smart about how we constructed that. You know what I mean? Mm. So. We're expressing ourselves through this, you know, tip, the lowbrow medium, <laughs> whatever. But yeah. we're doing it in kind of a sophisticated way. We we felt, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Stick because you hear a lot of bands that play those type of riffs, but the song is just like four of that riff and then four of a blast and four of that yeah. riff, and it's that's boring after yeah. a while. And it's, it can be. It's like what's different? It's like it's the same type of riff. It's in the same tempo and the same, mm-hmm. but it doesn't catch with people the way some of our songs did early on. I guess. So, well, uh, then that that leads me to my my next question. You know, how did uh, how did you personally meet Ruben? I mean, talk talk about like a match meeting in heaven. You, do that? you know, <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you do it. Um, I actually had met Wayne, uh, the original vocalist, many years ago when we were kids through another mutual friend. Um, wind up uh, hearing them on K N O N radio in Dallas one time. They had a phone number. I called it. Um, turned out Wayne was the guy that I had met, you know, way back when, um, it was in middle school, really middle school. Yeah. That's, mm. that's when I first met Wayne. Oh, wow. He wasn't a singer, you know, we weren't, yeah. no ambitions of being in a band or anything. Of course. Um, but yeah, it was just funny and, uh, wind up going over to their apartment. He was living with him and, and, uh, Hound, um, TXDM, Corpse Gristle, yeah. Records. Or, um, or Svengali, our like <laughs> manager, the guy who came up with the Devourment logo, he, he drew the logo. The Hound. This guy, Paul Haybear, we called Hound. He was a tattoo artist that kind of like, he had money and he liked our band and he kind of like helped us out and financed us in the early in the beginning and he was friends with us. So it was kind of like, That's he's cool. he's kind of like the unknown fifth member. Whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so shout out, Paul. Yeah. So he's still doing stuff for Devourment. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, so kind of started hanging around and stuff and going to their practices. I was a huge fan, like, immediately when I heard the, the demo. Um, and I was so big of a fan, I actually learned the lyrics. And started going to their practices, Wayne uh, many times wouldn't show up, so I just kind of grabbed the mic once or twice. And, uh, you know, the rest was kind of history. I got a phone call from Brain a couple of months later. Hey, we're thinking about getting a new vocalist. and. It's like, you're fucking crazy? Who the fuck are you going to get? He's like, we're thinking about you. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) You know? I just Um, had to point out, your clock says 138 right now. Oh! (laughs) What the fuck is up, dude? That is sick, dude. Have you been waiting that whole time? I've been watching it the whole time. Yeah. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> that's why we changed the time to one o'clock isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. oh that's so yeah, that. that is great, great, great marketing thank you for that <laughs> so dumb holy moly <laughs> but yeah i mean that's Proven. kind of how we met and yeah the rest yeah kind of from became history because we were like we we're jamming with wayne like he said he's i didn't even know he was i didn't know him at all i saw mm-hmm. him at our apartment with my that we lived at like you mentioned as some random dude that would show up or I didn't know who he was I was like he was some weirdo Creep. I thought kids stay out of here <laughs> and, then, and then like you said we start Wayne started having some issues with you know showing up and doing the work it and right it yeah. happens and then he, he just happened to be there the one one of the times Wayne wasn't there they were like uh, get on the mic and we were as a practice and we're just jamming songs and I literally like just grabbed the mic just to see what it sounded like. Yeah, and we started and playing. I, I had no intention <laughs> of you know taking that vocal spot and anything else, and I like, oh, okay, none. So I was kind of shocked when Brain called me like a few months later. Hey, you know, it was like, what the fuck? It's because he got on the mic. We were like I said, we were practicing. He got on the mic just for no reason, and me and Brain were like, whoa, this guy's 
sick. <laughs> <laughs> this guy might be better than Wayne. Oh, oh like holy crap! I mean, he's you've heard it in Mount MTD. The guy's nuts. Sick, Wayne yeah. is sick. Love Wayne. He's amazing too. They're both god tier vocals. Yeah. But like we heard him, he was like, That's sick. He smoked us, and we were just like, call that guy. <laughs> call, call him. Call that weirdo back. Yeah, call yeah. that guy. That is nuts, dude. And this was like what? Like how long before we recorded the album? MTD. Uh, it was like I want to say sometime in early '98, late '97. Yeah, so like less than a year. Yeah. Before we were gonna go record our first album. So, so what? So when Rumi came in, like, were you guys already in the process of writing? Uh, that record, uh, I mean, so were you, are we writing it, or did, Ru- uh, did Ruben come in and then you started writing that record? So when I joined, they were in the middle of writing Postmortal Coprophagia, which is the third track on the album. Um, so they had already had the three song demo. Yes. Um, and those three songs made it to the album as well. So technically, they were kind of halfway through the writing process. Yep. Okay. Already. It's kind yeah. of a. It's kind of a good time to come in yeah or like because you, you, you can still you still have time to put like your like like your stamp on it you know sure sure so okay so that leads to my, my next question so what was the writing process for molesting the decapitated because that's like literally the record i mean <laughs> yeah. you know like what like what was that what, what was that process like were you guys in like like a room in the garage jamming and like oh. how, like what was yeah it was it was uh like I said, when we first jammed, me and um, Brian ever jammed. It was at his house in Haltom City. It's outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And he had a little garage in the back. And, um, we jammed out there. And that's where we started writing the first songs for MT- for the demo, the three songs. And then mm-hmm. when we started trying to fill it out for MTD, yeah, it was the same deal. We just, me and him, it was kind of like a James and Lars situation. He'd come in with riffs. I'd come in with, with uh, like rhythm ideas and beats and stuff. And we'd kind of mash them together mm-hmm. for the most part. And like... So I felt like I was, a, he's a good riff writer, and I felt like I was a good arranger, song arranger, as far as like constructing you know, the parts and where they go and how long we should play X and Y and that kind of thing. So that's that was pretty much most of it. And Kevin Clark also had some riffs. Uh, our second guitar player at the time came in with you know a few riffs here and there. I can't remember which song specifically, but. The yeah, the gist of it was me and Brian Wynn writing all the all the songs together. Makes like I said, riffs and just ideas and putting them together, playing and working them out. The you know, old school, straight up old school, <laughs> old school dude. Work, working them out, probably some fights, probably some oh absolutely, <laughs> pro- probably some yeah. bickering. You you suck, or you're out of the band now. Then you come back absolutely. the next day and then <laughs> right, okay, yes, yeah. yeah, dude, that's just the way to do it, man. You, you got to hash it out. Yeah, you know, you're just there writing and you're just. This blasting fucking brutal yeah. death metal and like you know you're just <laughs> playing death metal for, for for hours and hours exactly you know how uh it, let's say like a, a normal day like uh, how long was like a day you know of like writing yeah um we'd usually jam for like i don't know three or four hours at a time and wow. just construct you know probably work on one or two songs at a time in terms of like arranging and constructing because like i said he would come in with a bunch of riffs already and then we mm-hmm. kind of massage them and work them into stuff. Occasionally, he would come in with like an almost f- completely written song, mm-hmm. like "Devour the Damned." I think he mostly had completely written when he came in, so it was just me learning it and making tweaks here and there. Um, yeah, so it it was slow and you know slow and jam room writing as it is, but um, yeah, I guess we got those other five songs done within like nine months or something before we we're gonna go record the record or something like that. That is, there's, there's a magic to that. Just hashing it out in a room. There's just something to it. I can't. I, I don't really know like the wording to put to that, but there's just something about it. It's know? just, or yeah. It's. I mean, it's organic. It's like I love writing stuff and sending files on the computer. Now that's great and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, getting in a room and just like yelling at each other yeah, is sure. just <laughs> is the. No, <laughs> there's think, no I replacement for it. You have to it. have that. You gotta. Have, you gotta have the two people. Yeah. You know, arguing back and forth, and you know, yeah. me. I'm kind of always been the middleman with him and Chris, and yeah. you know, I kind of now. feel like it's like okay. Let's listen to him. Let's listen to him, you know, and then we try to work this exactly. out. Exactly. He can be the Let objective mediator yeah. and go, so no, that riff's better. Nope, he's right on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that kind of thing. So, Ruben, you were also in the room as well? Uh, 
a lot of the times, Sometimes. and it's usually if if they're writing um, for a while, and then I'll kind of get a message from him. It's like, dude, you need to come up here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need to try to work some stuff out. And it's like, we're okay. stuck. Yeah. And I know. We're not getting along. So then I get up in there. Yeah. I'll get up in there. And it's like, okay, you, you got to listen to each other. You know, yeah. I know he gets pissed. And <laughs> sure. Chris, you know, he'll get offended and stuff. Right. Of course. It's like, you yeah. know, but at the same time, you have to have that. Otherwise, you're just going to have, you know, in my opinion, a crappy record. If everybody's like, oh, this is great. It's going to be I sterile. Know, yeah. It's just not, it's not going to have the edge. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You need that creative push and pull. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just adds a, an unexplainable something. You know, it you, does. You got to have, conflict makes for great music. Exactly. You know, if you, if you learn how to, you know, communicate back and forth and not exactly, the hard part is not to break up and completely hate each other. You know, <laughs> exactly. if, if, if you could get through that part, dude, you're fucking set. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So. Okay, now let's. <laughs> we need to get into the record cover. <laughs> you gotta talk about the cover. Do we really? Jay, uh, not we, we. We don't have to do it for a no, lot. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Jay, I love it, dude. Uh, I don't even know if Google will even find the, the fucking cover, man. Oh, that's right. There. The uncensored version. Yeah, that's right. There. So yeah, so the uncensored version. Who came up with this cover? Was 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 a mic? No, that's actually a real photo. Um, Hound came up with it. Didn't Hound you? had a book by an artist, uh, Joel, Joel Peter, Peter Whitkin. Whitkin. Yep. So and, please uh, don't sue us. I'm sorry. We, I mean, we found we found it, and we he had been toying the, with the idea of you know calling a song "Lusting the Decapitated," and right. it's like maybe we should call the album that, and then yeah. you know that was kind of in the Fuck. book. And I came like, up with that song title. He showed perfect. me that photo, and Just I was perfect. like, "That's it." That's it, dude. That's perfect. <laughs> there it is. Press it, you yeah. fucks. Yeah. <laughs> so disgusting. <laughs> so right now, this is where we would pull this up on YouTube. Basically, the whole screen should be blurred, basically. Yeah. But uh, if you're listening, watching, we're just looking at, at, at the cover. It's which classy, is... dude. Come on. So Okay. <laughs> so this came from He's a book. Zooming yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> He's zooming in. <laughs> okay, Jay, calm down. Dude. What's up, man? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with uh, Ben Caught Buttering is the same guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, Pungent Stench. Yeah. He does like this, yeah, real life, looks like funeral type photograph. I don't the, know how he does He it. takes corpses and makes <clears throat> photos with them. Makes art. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, no, he, well, apparently he makes album covers. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, little did he know. No, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it catch, caught people's attention back in the day. So. It still does, man. Yeah. yeah. It like, still yeah. does. <clears throat> And this is what, like ninety nine. Mm. Yes. So when uh, it's just like a funny process where, like, you you mm. see it and you're like, "That's it. It's perfect." <laughs> yeah, it just it literally fell in yeah, place. It, it was really like did. everything like kind of worked out. Just like the logo when uh, we were jamming one time and Hound came over and he had the he drawn it. He said, "I got, I got made one, a logo for you guys." I was like, okay, sure, whatever. And he showed it and we all sat and there's like, "That's it." Wow. You know, it was just like, "Bam!" That's exactly what we want. And then. I came, like I said, I came up with random song titles. I didn't write any lyrics, but I would just come up with song titles. And "Lusting Decapitated" is one of the ones sure. I came up with for a while. I have no idea. I don't want to molest any decapitated bodies or anything. Of course. But, um, and yeah, and then he'd show me that photo. And I was like, I got this title. I was like, Whoa! That kind of <laughs> that guy doesn't have a head. It kind of works out. And he's naked. It works. Yeah, and he's naked. And I see his peepee. It looks like somebody molested him. <laughs> it's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> his pants are gone, dude. He's got his socks on though. Yeah, he could. He, he could kept his a, socks. On. He could use a. Love diet. how they like put his hands up like on his leg. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nuts, yeah. dude. <laughs> Made it. Yeah. He should go on a diet. He should. Yeah. <laughs> and like the fact, and like, I was just looking at like past merch lines that that you guys have had, and I'm, like uh -oh. you, you literally put it on t-shirts. Mm -hmm. We put it on a t-shirt again, like last year. <laughs> so. Do people buy that? Oh, yeah. yeah, dude, oh, yeah. you'd be shocked. People, okay, this is people funny. People like bag for it this sometimes. Is, like, what? I want to shout out shout out that. my buddy Cody Davidson from Sanguisigabog. So he's a big development fan. We're we've been we're friends. We he I'm a fan of Sanguisigabog and him and all his bands too. Wow. And he bought one of those shirts and it came out like last year, right when Sanguisigabog filmed this like video, like in studio video, and he wore that shirt in the video. I was like, dude, you can't wear that in that video. They're gonna like block your video or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Well, there was, there was that award last year. I forget what it was that Stabbing Worst. got, and it was yes, it was that. But oh, it was 3D. Yeah. somebody made a, oh yeah, yeah. somebody, yeah. somebody made, made a statue award. of it. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, 3D statues. Yeah, there's action figures of that guy. Somebody yeah. made like an action figure of the, the MTD cover guy. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Really? Yes. That's yeah, like a NECA like 
badass, like, yeah. detailed, three D printed action figure. Yeah. Like you can get it like a Hellraiser or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, but it's that dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Crazy. Unbelievable. There it is right there. Oh, yeah. There yeah. It it's in the packaging and everything. Mm -hmm. Buy that Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I definitely would like to meet someone before I die that is really casually meet them and they're wearing that shirt. So, I mean, like, uh, that's such a, <laughs> that's a very, for, for a t shirt, it's very extreme. I agree. Yeah, it's I agree. very extreme. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. out there. They're, they're out there. Oh, yeah. yeah, we used to think there. What was it? The cradle fell. Jesus was a cunt shirt. Yeah, like a or the libidity shocking. one. Sure. Yeah. Spreading yeah, the asshole open No, dude. On the back. A naked dude's penis with his head <laughs> yeah. missing on your front of your shirt. Brutal. That's hardcore. You, you put it. Yeah. You put it on like you know, orange camo, pink camo, and like yeah, the whole, yeah, the, the yeah, whole yeah. this whole nine. Yeah, I would never wear stuff. Like I would. That <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wear my own band's merch. Yeah, exactly. I'm still waiting to see the tattoo of it somewhere. So, somebody I'm sure it's probably somebody like that. Yeah, somebody's got it's gotta it. be someone out there. Someone, someone in out, Poland. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness, dude. <laughs> well, I me mean, uh, again. Just one, one of those weird things that just worked. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and we we had a bunch of like lucky breaks where we felt like this is what we want. And it just kind of fell into place like that did. We yeah. weren't searching for a naked photo of a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, did, did you, you have the internet mm -hmm. back then? Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we had AOL, bro. Yeah, was, uh, yeah. We had Hotmail. Unholy metal. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. I'm still, man. That's just that's that's the cover. And I was curious, like, uh, so when you, so when this gets uploaded to, like, let's say, like a Spotify, like, do you have to edit the cover or what's? Or I think is we do. There? I think yeah. most times, like you saw some of them, they had like a stake over his. Even you, they're getting creative now because if you look at some of them, some of them are just like uh, yeah. black I, it out with. Well, not that. The T-bone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 so, we'll just make it look like the shadow house. covers the, the part. Yeah, yeah. So it just, just looks. It's just like yeah, it's just a black hole. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, because Spotify is getting kind of yeah. weird with like artwork where you kind of have to. Yeah, the, oh, Apple, yeah. the Apple one is definitely blacked out. Yeah, yeah. you can see it. Yeah, yeah. If you go some of the ones Hound <clears throat> posted were blacked out too. Yeah, if you go on Apple Music and look at the album or Spotify, I think it's just, it's just Apple for sure has to be. It's blacked. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Steve Jobs isn't cool with that, dude. <laughs> so, no, this is no, this is too much. It's it Apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. It's just blacked yeah, out. Just yeah. Like, okay. They just like make the shadow go in. My goodness. It's like a vagina. It's like a <laughs> bikini. It's like a hair pie. <laughs> <laughs> and what's uh and one last thing about about, about this record. So mm -hmm. what's very interesting about the sound of the environment is the also the recording quality. And we're talking nineties. You, you can't really yeah. it's like where do you go to record something like this? And like the fact that the impale demo sounds as good as it does and then this record sounds the way it does, I mean, shout out to uh, Braxton. Yeah, I mean yeah. the way, I mean the sound that you guys got from this record is pretty. I, I assume there is nowhere else to go in Texas or Dallas to, to get that kind of sound. No, not really. I mean, there's studios, but yeah, to get like what we were trying to go for was this. Yeah, and they had a history already. Yeah, since yeah. Braxton was the original guitar player of Devourment, but did he was, he was doing other things, but he wanted to produce it. So did you just trust him? Absolutely, because. Like I said, since we were in the same band, he knew exactly what my vision of this band mm. was sonically as well, like how I wanted to sound, not just just the songs, but like yeah. that I wanted the most brutal, thickest thing we could get on record. And you know, mm -hmm. we were doing reel to reel tape back then, old school, old school, old school. Yeah. So yeah, he, I, we trusted him completely, and we weren't disappointed when he came when we got the masters back. We we're like, yep, that's Whoa. exactly what we want <laughs> to sound like. So. What did you think? When, when, you, when you first hear it, it's like, it's always like, wow. <laughs> it, it, that's exactly, because that's the first record I'd ever played on or done anything with. And it's like, to get that back and then to also be like stoked on it. Yeah. You know, and like, it's hard we, to do. We did the thing I wanted to do for years and it's in my hand and I can listen to it and it sounds amazing. It's like, that's the best feeling, right? Ever, yeah. so. Yeah, how is the uh, how is like the reaction? Like, like what? Is, I mean, what? I, I can tell you because I <laughs> grew up on the East Coast, right? So yeah. I was listening to that when it came out, and it like totally blew the scene apart up there. Where me and my friend would go to shows, and we would walk out because we. So many bands were copying that sound. Whoa, we're just like really? another devourment ripoff, and we just walk out. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It just totally changed everything up there. So you guys, yeah. uh, you guys also experienced like, like the copycat thing. This is like the record comes out. I don't know if they did, but I did. See, that's that's the funny thing is like it's not like now. Back then, we did since we didn't communicate a bunch on the internet. It was mostly still through like tape trading and snail mail and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we didn't know that stuff. We we knew we liked it. and We knew our local scene 
dug it and was kind of blowing up there. We had no clue. People like in Whoa. other parts of the country mm-hmm. liked it as much as he, that's what I mean. Like coming back and like finding out all these bands listen to it. We had no idea. We knew it did well in that little, our little small, you know, pond in Texas. And that was it. We didn't know the, okay. The first thing I knew that like made me go, Oh my God, we did something for real, for real is like I was obsessed, like I said, with fetus and cryptopsy and all this other stuff. And somehow uh, cryptopsy in Canada got yeah. a, got a copy of it. Mm. And John Levasseur, the guitar player, or whatever at the time, sent me a, a handwritten uh, letter saying it was amazing. And it was innovative, and also I was like, oh my god! I was like, yeah. one of my god level inspirational bands just sent me a letter and told them <laughs> that wow. this record That's we just crazy. did. That was like, yeah. okay, maybe we did something, you yeah. know. Yeah, not a, not a lot of people talk about Cryptopsy, but they've been around for a long time doing death metal at a high level. Absolutely, mm-hmm. like high level death. Like what Non So Vile came out early nineties. Yes, and but like I was people even, forget, dude. The record before mm-hmm. that uh, was Blasphemy Made Flesh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. the record that like I heard and I was like, <clears throat> what the shit? Is, that's literally the record yeah. that mm-hmm. made me decide to put what we call whatever at the time hyper blasting or whatever yeah in devourment that's why we have so many our blast parts are oh, all like stupid could, fast oh, that's that's shit, straight crypto crypto, crypto. straight up crypto. <clears throat> wow because i like all uh, and that's i mean <laughs> i tried to do all the kinds of blasts you start sure. out you do the bomb blast the cannibal mazurkowitz mm-hmm. do the hammer blast from suffo mm-hmm. do the old school morbid blast whatever when i heard defenestration the first track on blast we made flesh on a cassette that somebody's gave me from cryptopsy and i heard that shit it was like 300 bpm or something stupid i was like what is that I, is that even drums is that like human <laughs> then i just sat in my garage and trying to play that song for like ever and then i came back to start devourment with these guys i was like this is what we're going to be blasting you know yeah. fucking hyper shit it's like mm-hmm. none of this no hyper no. blast <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gonna be if we're blasting what's the point of blasting i want to go as fast <laughs> as possible <laughs> pull up that cover jay so Yes, there you go. We were, uh, that's not it. Is that it? No. Oh, you're talking about none. So that's Blasphemy Made Flesh. That's Is it? Yes. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it made it. What a record, dude. Yeah, it's amazing. Legend. Yeah, shout out Cryptopsy. The OG Cryptopsy is one of the most extreme, Mm -hmm. brutal bands ever. And And what what year did this record come out? 93. Jay, can you check that, please? 93? That's So are, are we going to guess... In 94, 93, something like that. 90, I, I'm going to guess, yeah, ni- ni- 93. Because I remember hearing it, and I, I'm pretty sure I first heard it in like 95, and it had already been out. So I think it, it was... Already 95. been out for a while? Yeah, I think so. Because I'm thinking about non, non So Vile, that came out like mid-90s. Yeah, it, non so, it feels very mid, mid-90s. Non So Vile was like that, yeah, that next level where we were, we were like, oh my God, these guys were amazing before, now they're just like 94. next level. 94. 94. November 94. <laughs> Jesus, twenty. Well, I was, were you so, born yet, John? I was nine. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. I mean, I was like, I was fixed. I was gonna say, I was listening to Molesty Decapitated in freshman year of high school. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. You know, I was listening to like you know Slipknot and all that kind of shit back then. You know. Yeah. Like big into that. Then I heard that shit and I was like, Phew. yeah, it's all those memes of like. <laughs> so it was kid. over. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. It's like those Change your life. Meme, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Meme pictures you see of like a kid told like yeah. Slipknot's the heaviest thing I ever heard. And yeah, yeah. Like, so, and then her head explodes. Yeah, I was, yeah. Like, <laughs> I was 13 years old. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. never would have thought I'd be jamming with you guys, you know? Like, <laughs> fuck. It's crazy. Yeah, it Same. is true. Crazy yeah. life, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> Nuts, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were, uh, now I'm thinking about the conversation we had with defeated San, Sanity. Uh, Sanity Welk, and we were talking about, uh, and also Diego from a, this core shout out we're talking about unique blasting and there and there's what, what we're describing there is the the, the cannibal blast yep. where you put the banium on it there's uh the suffo blast yeah right i just heard about called the offset blast where it's really? like uh it's like a the i yeah. call it like the a euro like immolation yeah it's yeah, like uh it's yeah. like the snare is between kick snare the, kick snare yeah yeah it's like, like yeah, that, yeah. that one so that's Diego calls it an offset. And what I failed to bring it up then, and I failed as a host, but <laughs> Devarment has your own blast. It's the fucking first blast. Oh. Festering? It's like a... Yeah. yeah. Like a buzz roll. Yeah, yeah buzz that's roll. like, yeah. that's... You literally took what Cryptopsy did and put your own twist to it and made a Devarment blast. That's mm-hmm. literally what I was intending on <laughs> doing. So Whoa. that it worked out and people, like, respond. Because, like, since no one had ever done it and I never heard it on a record, I was like... 
either people are going to laugh at this or it's good. You know, it's going to be stupid. People, people did though, but in a, in a yeah, girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Cause I did that. And then I pushed it even further on one of this. On, I would start doing the thing I call the press buzz roll blast or buzz grind. Buzz which, grind. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Which is literally just a, a buzz roll yeah, over yeah. kicks and stuff. But yeah. yeah. And that was before I heard anyone doing like gravity blast or any kind of stuff like that. So I was like trying to invent my own little thing, but yeah, the festering thing, that song did start with that beat. That's how I we wrote that. I was like, I have this idea. Can yeah. we write a riff around that? Yeah. And they worked out. And Brain just like, yeah, let's, <laughs> that'll work. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's really cool to hear the uh, history of it. I I didn't know you got it from Cryptopsy. It's fucking sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, Cryptopsy are also goats. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. Flo Monnier from Cryptopsy was, and <clears throat> Dave Cole Ross, the drummer of Hated, uh, Malevolent Creation at the time, but he was also mm -hmm. in this band called Disgorged from New York and mm. but most um, and then Suffo Suffocation eventually Steve, Steve those are my Ashheim. two favorite yeah. what's that Steve Ashheim maybe yeah definitely Deicide I love Deicide too mm -hmm. always have how do you see his last name I always thought it was Ashheim okay didn't Glenn say Glenn Steve Asim or something because yeah. 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 I mispronounced it on camera so I felt like, like, like we all did and then, and then, yeah, we all did. Did. <laughs> then he, he corrected me nobody <laughs> said <laughs> I stand corrected it's his fault yeah. for having a weird ass last name yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I say that guy. Don't, don't say it wrong in front of him. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Steven. Yeah, Glenn's intense, man. He is, man. Great, great guy, though. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a complete opposite. You know, you don't really know someone until you sit down and talk to him. Yeah. It's like you know, you have like these preconceived notions, and you hear the rumors, and you you see someone that's, and you talk. Yeah, to I say them. that's the best interview I've ever seen with Glenn Batten. By the way, your interview. Well, the most informative, best. You got more out of him. Like that was the most entertaining because. Uh, I don't know a lot of people like that came from the 90s death metal scene like me and, and Ruben mm -hmm. like back then like pre-internet tape trading all that stuff was like all these bands had this mystique because nobody really knew them right yeah. and they were never so like Glenn Benton was like literally this Car cartoon character that we heard beat up people and burn <laughs> burn crosses in his yeah. forehead which he did yeah. <laughs> but like it fed into this like legend of Glenn Benton mm -hmm, yeah. which is partially true <laughs> but like to see him like and then he when he told you like the reason he does what he does is revenge mm -hmm. I was like that's the most Glenn Benton yeah. thing I've ever heard in my life yeah. <laughs> I was like that was so spite. sick I do without spite yeah right <clears throat> wow they're legend you Glenn Benton yeah another, another goat another OG absolutely mm -hmm. yeah Still going, still going, still yeah. going. Yeah, band, they, band, yeah, they sound amazing. Right? Still, yeah, it sounded mm -hmm. fucking phenomenal. Some, yeah, some that night. I was like, oh shit, turns into like a, turns into Glenn Benton. Like mm -hmm. it was like a, you turn into like a like a demon. Yeah, yeah. just turn. The switch was, like, goes switch, on. Switch and you're just watching like, wow, <clears throat> it's the same person. Yeah, yeah. some of those '90s bands you see them, you're like, okay, oh, and some yeah. you're like, that's what it sounded like in '93. Yep. you know, or yeah. whatever. And that's the side is yeah. killing it. Absolutely. When did you see him? Last, I think we saw them at M MDF, Maryland Death Fest. We played there in 2020. No, we played with them in, at uh, Hellfest 2019. And, and Hellfest. Yeah. We played, they were both at both. Mm -hmm. But I, we watched them mm -hmm. at MDF. Like, I watched their whole set. Mm -hmm. I sang the whole thing. I was like, <laughs> wow. I was like, I know every word, dude. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, say this mother can't go to my heart. I'm like, dude, it's so amazing. Yeah, they definitely sound like a like an influence on, on you guys you know yeah yes but the mid-tempo death metal stuff that we do in our songs was straight up deicide-ish mm -hmm. you know to dead by dawn type yeah uh, grooves and stuff well i i, I gotta say as a, a fan and a fellow musician it's really cool to see like you guys with like a solid lineup because you were gone for like a, like three records yeah so it's yeah. cool it's cool to see like <laughs> You guys back and it seems to, you know, friends. Yeah. So yeah. it's worked out really well. We're really happy. What did you think when Ruben just went on? What's that? A uh, uh, Ruben like went on to still still deal with Wii U. Oh. Were you pissed? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I always kept track of it, but no, I was never pissed that they kept going because, like, when I quit, I had a sour taste in my mouth about sure. the whole. So I didn't want anything to do with death metal. I'm like, or devourment. I uh, just like <laughs> do your thing, whatever, and. He did, he started up a little bit, and then Mike Majewski started up again, mm -hmm. you know, for the the middle era of the yeah. Yep, uh, who became the singer and yeah. did all the switching roles sure. and stuff. Uh, yeah, I thought it was amazing, and you know, I had the hugest respect for all the stuff that they were doing with the band. I didn't, you know, necessarily listen to all the records and mm -hmm. follow it like that or anything, but I had no like ill will or anything or 
I just, I kind of checked out <laughs> mostly until like, 2011 or something and um i kind of got whatever it is it's like you play something for so long you go away from it you're like eventually it comes around again you're like mm, yeah i want to play death metal again i don't know why i have no clue why mm. and then i started pl- trying to put bands together and then we j- me and him hooked up with brian the original guitar player from molesting <clears throat> who hadn't played in death metal bands forever. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool. The original MTD drummer, the original MTD guitar player from Devourment, OG Devourment, mm-hmm. started a band, and we started kind of doing that. And, and then, then he kind of left, and that's where John stepped in. Yep. Got him on guitar with exactly. that project. Yeah, so we jammed with John before in Mashiach, that, that yeah. interim band between me quitting Devourment and rejoining Devourment. And then mm-hmm. when we got the opportunity to rejoin uh chris was like the sole member and he asked me he's like hey do you want to come back to devourment and play drums and it's just me i'll be playing guitar instead of bass now let's jam and see what happens i was like yes yeah, try it out that's cool let me try it because machia was kind of falling apart at that point mm-hmm. yeah. so and we jammed and i was like i don't know you know if this is gonna work i don't but then we jammed and i was like this is gonna work it, it was one of those situations again where you just get in a room with somebody and you play and you're like that's it that's that's what I'm looking for. You know, everything just fit again. And we've been going since, since 2013, 2014? 2014, 2014, yeah. 2014. We had our first tour and reformed. And, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, like, one of my things was, like, I was telling um, Chris, if I rejoin, can we get Ruben back on vocals? And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like, bring it all the way back. You yeah, know? I was all too happy to oblige. Yeah, and I we didn't know that, though. I didn't know that, because he hadn't sang in what? I hadn't sung in forever. 15 and, years. You know, there was things about molesting where it was like, I didn't really like um, the way the vocal came out. Um, but then I started thinking about it, you know, this is my chance to kind of fix, you know, right those wrongs right. and fix all that. And, yeah. You know, um, so I was pretty nervous, but... Uh, you know, in the end, you know, I came to that first practice and it was like, oh, this is it. Just like he said, you know. It felt good? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I could tell you were nervous too. That was funny. Because yeah. I was asking, you were like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know if I can do it. Then it, it was like, I could tell from our perspective too. And me and Chris jammed and he showed up, got on the mic and we jammed like one song or something. It was like, yeah, this, we're back, dude. I think we're back, man. <laughs> Old John Wick. I'm thinking we're back. I think, I, I think, <laughs> I think we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because Ruben, you and you've been playing guitar for years. Oh yeah, yeah. I still play guitar like in my house and stuff. But yeah, I, I don't miss carrying any guitar equipment. I'm not gonna <laughs> That's lie. Us. Um, like my microphone, I usually hand. He to makes him. me carry his yeah, microphone. Yeah, he doesn't carry his mic. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's too That's heavy. a joke, but yeah. sort of. <laughs> sort of, but not really. Yeah. No. no, dude, it's it, it's great that you got the OG lineup. You guys are going on nine years as solid. It crazy how it long it took you guys to get like this is like a solid lineup you know yeah you're from from uh, from little i know from from you dave like you're a very chill guy and i mean you have like a very chill bass player it kind of locks everything in and it's easiest to mood yeah yeah you know? so we were talking about that yesterday and some of the <laughs> conflicts we're getting into and they called me basically switzerland right like i'm the neutral one there trying to go. smooth it over yeah. there you go make sure everybody's happy yeah. Getting along. Me and Chris are the brothers that butt heads and yeah, fight yeah. while we're writing music. Of course. He's, he's the, the dad, dad. Yeah. and yeah. he's the like calming yeah. whoever <laughs> cousin. He's the aunt, I don't know. The aunt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the sweet aunt, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So I mean, uh, so uh, Ruben, you're you're back, and and you, and you were in the room too, right? Uh, the first jam, I don't think so. No, because not initially. I was like bugging Brad, like, "Hey, uh, d- yeah. <laughs> remember me, your old bass player? Like, oh, I, I, yeah, I want to be in Devourment too." He's like, "We'll see, we'll see." I'm like, oh, <laughs> <dang>. <laughs> I was not. What it did? Well, y'all, you, 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 you didn't know what you're doing. That's at my that point. point. I was you know? like, I don't even know if me and Chris are gonna gel. Jamming. Right, right. That's what yeah. I was. Yeah. I was like, yeah. first I got to jam with him and go, "Is this gonna work at all?" And then, yeah, yeah. then him. But I was like, "Hey, we are, we played some of those songs in Mashiach," so I was like, "I know half the set. Yeah, you're he, going on tour like next month." They're like, all right, you can try it out. <laughs> it's like, all right, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, but oh, like, thanks, dude. We didn't have, we a couple, didn't, a yeah. couple days into the tour, they're like, hey, you're pretty cool. You want to join? I'm like, <laughs> I try to hide it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. I forgot about home. that. I yeah. forgot. Because like, like, I listened yeah. to them in high school, right? And now I'm jamming yeah. with them. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? That's yeah. such a crazy yeah. moment, huh? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you're, you're like it still school. is. I still look at on stage sometimes. I'm like, how the hell would I get here, right? I'm in the bar, man. That's basically how I felt 
when I initially joined too. It was just like, yeah. how the fuck yeah. did this happen? You know? Yeah, because you guys didn't have my intention just, of like trying. No, right. no mine no, was no. just 16 years later. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah. I had to wait over a decade. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> worth Long it. damn worth time. It. Yeah. yeah. No, this is a good lineup, and this is good material, right? So it's a good time to be in the band, for sure. And I think this year marks our longest continuous lineup, right? This will be, like you said, nine years. Nine so years, Yeah. Right? Pretty wow. solid, yep. It's very solid. No, I uh, just so I, I take you guys are you know communicating and you know being being friends. Cause it's really cool to hear that the backstory where like it really you were, you know, with Ruben and and Dave like you were a fan first and then and mm -hmm. then you joined. Yeah. That, that that's such an interesting way to join a band. I I, I don't know what that's like really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, yeah. Because you know we're just like yeah. Oh, this is the, this is it. You had an idea. You did your thing. And and we just, yeah. You didn't try mm -hmm. to like. That's that's yeah. a. That's really cool, man. Yeah, hell yeah. You didn't yeah. try to weasel your way into a bigger band. Or not yet. No, just <laughs> oh, my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let's not. Here he comes. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Dave, how long have you been living here? Only less than a year and a half, dude. Less than a year and a half? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Had, like, the end of 21, I moved out here. Were you uh, East Coast or what? So, East Coast, but then I was in Texas for, like, 10 years. That's how I met up with them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I gotta, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna have like a life plan just to join this <laughs> fucking band. I wish, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna follow them everywhere. worked out. I'm gonna move around around Dallas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fucking sick. Yep. I, I'm pretty ignorant about the Texas metal scene. How was like the death metal scene like in like the 90s and early 2000s? It was pretty fucking rad. I mean, I came like from like more of the old school thrash, so we had like rigor mortis. We had an old band called Sedition. Um, there was mm -hmm. a club out in Fort Worth I used to go to all the time. I saw Deicide on their first tour there. Whoa. Uh, it was called Joe's Garage. Um, but yeah, uh, dude, we had Prophecy, we had Miatus, we had Century. Prophecy. Prophecy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Prophecy. Um, some of the heaviest vocalists out of anywhere I've ever heard come from yeah. Dallas for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> so. yeah we. I agree. Like I moved there like just after uh, some of those bands, so there was like there already was a legit. And it's not like a rose colored glasses situation. Just like they were really good bands. There was like a whole contingent of Christian death metal bands was kind of uh, strange, but they were amazing. Like Disencumbrance, mm -hmm. band called Embodiment. That a lot Embodiment. Of people, Embodiment was amazing. They were, are they are they Texas? Yes, yes. they're Dallas. What? Dude. I've jammed with the guitar player in, a, in his subsequent band called The Famine. Oh, but, shit. But, yeah, Embodiment's from there. They were one of, When we were starting Devourment, me and Brains would watch Embodiment live all the time. They were one of what? my... And they were kids. They were like 16 or something. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. Embodiment, dude. They were like child prodigy death metal band. <laughs> they were killer. But, dude, yeah. that's sick. Embalmed and, I mean, yeah, Embodiment's... The, one of the sickest, sickest guitar players I've ever heard in death metal is Andy Godwin, the, the primary songwriter, singer of the early embodiment stuff. <sighs> what do you think of their later stuff? I liked it. It's just, I mean, the reason I got into them was because of their heavy stuff, because they mm -hmm. did it so well. But I respect them for, like, changing. I mean, everything they wrote, even when they changed styles, was good because he was such a good songwriter. So mm -hmm. I listened to it and when they had the different errors. And, like, when they even morphed back into more metalcore with the famine it was mm -hmm. still good the riffs were amazing so that's why i was like yeah I'm st i want to play some of this stuff this is between me like rejoining trying to do full-time death metal again so mm -hmm. it was a good like entry point for me to kind of get back into heavy music so oh I wow just, i just want to point out your clock says 213 and that's the slayer song stop it it's also jeffrey stop. Dahmer. Sure, just turn that around <laughs> sure, jeffrey right. yeah. apartment don't number. let dave see the clock <laughs> <in>. <laughs> What's like, what's next? Uh, oh, six six six. Really. Oh, yeah. Well, this clock goes to six six six. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're, let's make this podcast for four hours. Come on. Go. All right. Hit it. <laughs> Wait, it. isn't two thirteen? It's about Dahmer. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's part of the part of the Good show. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know Embodiment was from uh, Texas. Yeah. Now you know. Yeah. DFW. I guess it's something about <laughs> Dallas that's just brutal vocals, huh? I don't know what it is, man. It's a barbecue. Yeah. The barbecue, the tamales, or something—I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like the heaviest vocals, yeah, yeah. Um, oh my goodness, yeah, it's most totally of those true too. Phil Holland, dude. Phil Holland, Wayne. prophecy, mm -hmm. original prophecy singer. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say me, but <coughs> Ruben. Me. I'll say Ruben. Ruben. Of course, yeah. um, Wayne. Wayne Knopp, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. You're right. A lot of those bands had a very big focus on just really brutal, heavy stuff, and they were good at Sick. it. So good at it. And I don't know how that compared to like other scenes at the time. Like we only knew 
<clears throat> the California bands and the New York bands. It's mm-hmm. basically, you know, stuff of the Pyrexia. And then we heard Disgorge, like, on a, their first cassette. Maddie like, Way. Maddie yeah. Way. And we're like, yeah, that's fucking sick. Because right. we'd always, then we'd start getting lumped together. Like, yeah. it's the two most brutal yeah. bands at the time or whatever. True. <clears throat> they had a different, obviously, different approach, which we loved. We were fans of them. They were fans of us. So it was kind of... Big, you know, I would talk to Ricky Myers, the drummer back then and stuff. Yeah. And we played, I think we played one show with him. I can't remember. Anyway. That's a brutal show. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Speaking of brutal show, there's a tour that I want to see happen. I want, I want, it, to, I want it to be Cannibal Corpse, Devourment, Defeat of Sandy. And make it the heaviest tour yeah, of all that time. Too. Yeah, yeah. Somebody call us. Have you guys ever done a tour <laughs> with the Cannibal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a couple of weeks with them uh, oh, shit. across the U.S. and 2010? Uh, we did like a few dates in Texas prior to that. Okay. Yeah, that was what the different lineup. Though. That was probably like the like yeah. in Sea to Sewage era. Uh, like yeah, maybe Butcher? Unleash. Unleash. Maybe yeah. Unleash. But yeah. Because you did the Cannibal tour first, right? That was the first full tour you did. No, we actually had <clears throat> did, did the Cattle decapitation that was first. back to back. Okay, and Cattle, cattle was first, and then Cannibal. <clears throat> then you had a dying fetus tour scheduled that that's right you went in alphabetical order <laughs> yeah <laughs> C bands to D all the numbers band. guy he's okay. the letters guy yeah, yeah there, there you go. Go. <laughs> let's go let's go let's go board it DSI <laughs> <Yeah>. next <laughs> beheaded cannibal there you go DSI yeah. there we go yeah cannibal is like the coolest fucking dudes they are I mean mm-hmm. Yeah, he's friends with I don't know that Alex anybody. pretty well. Yeah, I kick his ass all the time. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm words, words with friends. friends. <laughs> so, words what's up, friends. Alex? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's a big part to their success. Cannibal. I mean, they're I mean, they're one of the not the biggest death metal band on the fucking planet. Oh, I think yeah, it's because they're, they're they're so cool. They're just cool. Uh, they're cool. They're just cool dudes, man. Yeah, and they've cool always and sounded like lot. Cannibal. And, yeah, right. and they tour a lot. But mm-hmm. they've maintained that Cannibal sound. It's like a Slayer kind of situation, right? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you hear a Cannibal record, you know what you're going to get. Exactly. It's going to be good, right? It's going it's to be good. It's hard to be consistent, dude. It is. Especially yeah. when talking death metal. I have this conversation all the time with people. It's so hard to be like an extreme band and have that consistency mm-hmm. and still stick out, you know? Yeah. You guys have it. You know, I was, I was listening to the band, uh, your, your record that came out in 2019, uh, uh, Obscene. Obscene Majesty. And yeah. there's, there was a word that bubbled up in my brain. And uh, <laughs> the word murder just popped <laughs> in my brain. Like if, it's like, if, like if murder had a sound, that was it. like if someone was killing me, it was just that sound. <laughs> and you guys just master that fucking <clears throat> sound. Thanks, man. That's what I'm going for. Great, murder. great cover. Just to, mm-hmm. and I mean, and, get, and it's the first record. I mean, wow! It's I didn't realize till right now. It's it was a full decade after, you know, yeah, it conceived. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you yeah. guys, you guys are back, <clears throat> making a r- records together. Yeah. That this record <clears throat> is fucking. It is ridiculous. We're pretty happy. We were happy. It. It's and this is it was great because, this record we approached basically like like MTD where. Me and Chris got in a room and took like two, three years of just hammering songs out. Like he had, you know, he's a riff machine. Yeah. And he's a songwriting machine. He's a pr- just prolific guy, period. An amazing mm-hmm. guitar player, cool dude, smart dude. And um, yeah, we, like I said, we get in the room and we start working out arrangements and songs and parts and stuff. And mm-hmm. we changed songs so many times. We had so many fights. And, yeah. But again, we think the result speaks for. Mm-hmm. how much work and effort we put into it. <clears throat> we didn't course. just like write some songs and go put it on a record and we're done. We're like, mm-hmm. no, these things have to be like perfect for us. You know what yes. I mean? In terms of like what we're making is art mm-hmm. or whatever to express ourselves musically. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it, yeah, like we're happy with the result. And, mm-hmm. and if people like it, that's just the icing on the cake for us. And know? then we went back to Braxton for it too. So that, yes. that helped. And, right. right. So really? it's like full that circle, sound, everything. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's a beautiful nod to MTD. Thanks, man. Yeah, we we just trying to, yeah, again, also vision wise, it was trying to, like, since we reformed the band, so it's kind of like, I we were I was imagining it sort of like you know if we just timeline jumped from MTD to 2023, like what would happen if the band had gone this route? You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And evolved that record in a different way than the uh, the other era did, which is amazing too. But like, this was what would have come after MTD if we'd all stayed in the band and I think you know what I mean and kind of like just wow. kept going like an alternate timeline <laughs> type <laughs> situation 
it's kind of like you guys had a second chance. Yeah. You know, it, which, absolutely. Which is great. You know, not, not a lot of bands get it. You know, we're, we're on our list, too. When you get the second chance, man, it's, it's, a, it's a special thing. Yeah, and that's why I was like, I was not going to take it for granted. I knew what it was, so I was going to make the most of it. I'm going to put all the sweat and tears and blood into it and mm -hmm. hope it works out and but i'm not gonna like just coast on it and go that's cool you know, yeah whatever no you don't you don't want to do that no everything has to be oh, that's perfect. good enough it's yeah good enough. that's good enough <clears throat> hey everything has to be fucking perfect man the the, the fucking cover the vibe the the, the uh, songs the, the uh, flow of the songs and, and, that, and that's the thing about uh writing brutal death metal you kind of like have to hash it out to have this certain flow Yes. There's like you can't just like it, you, you could kind of tell when like it's just like boom 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 it's just like kind of like hammered yes. in but right. when you, you could just tell by like the flow of of a, of a band and then songs when like, okay they were literally in a room they they worked their ass off that's literally what I mean about the fo it out. focus on songwriting and song craft and like constructing yeah. a song and, and having that flow like when you listen to a song that takes you on a roller coaster kind of thing or whatever mm -hmm. you know makes you feel these emotions or makes you angry or happy or whatever the fuck it's not just all right let's write riff a and then let's play riff b sure. and let's play riff a again mm -hmm. and let's play a verse and we're done you know it's not like yeah. i wanted to feel like there's intent behind everything and i think we did that you want uh, it sounds like you guys want people to feel Yes, exactly. Yeah. We don't want to feel murder. Further, yeah. feel, that's exactly it. Beat me to it. Oh, yeah, feel it and think it. You know, I mean, yeah. that dude, I'm telling you, that word just popped in. So I'm going to pitch some, I'm gonna pitch an idea to you guys. This is going to be a T-shirt. <laughs> Texas Murder Slam. Could work. Well, Could work. I... <laughs> or just Murder Slam or maybe oh, there's, there's, already, one, there's a band there's oh. one caveat yeah, yeah, that's yeah. there's a caveat Texas yeah. Murder Crew there's a, yeah, right? oh yeah, that's yeah. A, that's and a it's a former uh, musician from Devourment yeah <laughs> really yes yeah. oh wow Kevin, Kevin yeah. Clark our second guitar player he formed a new band called Texas Murder Crew nice <sighs> Damn it! Damn. So we're gonna have to shoot that down. Yeah, we're gonna. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. You can do. I'm triggered. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll Sorry, man. I didn't mean to yeah. trigger you. What well, this record came out in 2019. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's you know going on three, four years. You know, this, mm -hmm. if you guys doing, any, you guys been talking or vibing any anything possible that that could be new. We've demoed pretty much a full album. Right. Um, there's just some work to do. A lot of work to do. Yeah. yeah. Chris wrote an album's worth of material. Yeah. And yeah, we just haven't done that part yet, where we all kind of hash out the the fine details of it. But Bite a little bit, and then yeah. Mm -hmm. But the meat of it Quit is and there. Come back and exactly. Say, oh, yeah. 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 Done that yet. Quit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's in process. So and cool. there's some progress there. You know, get hiccups and we have starts and stops. But there's music there, so we're gonna record wow. it at some point. Same same shit. You guys, you guys lock. Gonna go lock in a room. Start jamming. <sighs> gonna try. It's gonna be a little sure. more difficult. <laughs> 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 Chris, Chris lives in Austin now. I mean, yeah. you know, he obviously lives here. So We're a little more spread out now, so it's a little mm -hmm. more difficult than it was with MC Majesty. But yeah, we'll figure something out. Where are uh, where are, uh, are you, Brad? I'm in I'm in Dallas, and he's in Dallas. In Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Okay, so Dallas, okay, Fort Worth. still okay. Yeah. <clears throat> California and Chris is in Austin, which is um, it's like four hours, three hours away. Yeah, like and that. John's Houston, so that's yeah, a different another part of Texas four hours too. that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are just invading Texas. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a lifelong fucking evasion. There's so much Texas though, you know. And yeah. Texas is it's a massive a, fucking that's state. That's what it too. is. It's just so big. It's tough. <laughs> that, that's a best big. country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oh, much, yeah. huh? Yeah. There's something. I mean, being. <laughs> Being born and raised in California, I mean, like the you just heard about like the, like Texas death metal, <laughs> Texas slam. Oh my goodness, it's yeah. so big, dude. That's a big it's state, stupid. dude. Yeah, it's too. I big. mean, you could drive 15 hours and still be in Texas. Yeah, you can't mm -hmm. leave the state. It's like I envy the dudes that like could live in in the East Coast and they're like, yeah, I went to Pennsylvania and I went to Connecticut in like one day and like <laughs> I can't leave my state in one day, dude. Yeah. <laughs> What's the venue out in Dallas? What's oh. like? Amplified. Lot. That changes all the time. Amplified <laughs> live. All the time. Yeah. yeah, it used to be Gas Monkey. Now it's called Amplified Live. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's like the big venue, though. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of venues there. Yeah. Yeah. Austin and Houston have more, I think. Where's that? Uh, what's the one in Austin everybody plays? Come and Take It. Yeah, Come and Take mm -hmm. It Live. That's pretty cool. We're playing there on the tour. Yep. Nice. <clears throat> Is there a, a venue that was there for a long time that's still there? 
or are they all um, gone? The, I mean, are we talking big venues, just clubs? Clubs. Both. It could be cl- like, like arenas, uh, The probably. Bomb Factory, but it's called The Factory now. Um, I've, I saw shows back in the 90s, um, and they're still around. Yeah, like all the clubs we used to play in the 90s are all gone. There's no like... Most all of them, yeah. Yeah, it's not like well, Atlanta where you have the masquerade that's been there since I was yeah. in high school and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, we don't have any. Yeah, we but, had the Galaxy and... yeah. Curtain Club. And yeah, all the places we played back in the day with early development, are, there's there's not there. They're not there. House of Blues has been there forever, <laughs> if we ever get to play that. Amplified Live has been there for like 10 years, maybe, something. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you guys will. After, after we put it out right now. Put it out in the universe. Campbell yeah. Corpse take out <laughs> Environment, <laughs> Defeat of Sandy, heaviest <clears throat> tour of all time. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> The throw on Mortician too. Yeah, Mortician. Yeah, I'll Mortician. talk about that heavy band, dude. Yeah. Yes. Remember there on the. Uh, remember when Relapse, which you guys are also signed to, which is fucking sick. Um, they they did this genius idea where they they put out the contaminated. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, compilation. Yeah, such, such, such a cool promo compilation. I found the of Nazem about that exhumed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Man, what a fucking and and, and Mortician was one of those bands. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think that's how I first heard him. Was like one of those early compilations or relapse. I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> it had everybody on there. It's dude. like five minutes of a horror movie, then this insane song after it. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes of music. Yeah. Yeah, they have like you know like a two point oh, a three point oh. Oh, sick. Do you relapse is a legendary. Yeah, it's OG. The relapse OG. Slayer logos. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude. Yeah, if you if you got signed to relapse, you just knew that the band was going to be sick. Yeah, man. Like. Early two thousands, all those bands on Re- Fetus and Sphela Carnage, yep. and I mean, like malignancy for a while. Yeah, just worship yeah. that yeah. shit. You know? Yeah, they just had the heaviest stuff. Skinless, skinless, skinless. exhumed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yeah, all the stuff we listened to. Yeah, we boom, coming up. Soil and Green, Niles, Willie yes, Green. Dude. Wow, early Cephalic. Fetus. Cephalic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cephalic was. Oh, Nile too. Mm-hmm. Nile, <laughs> legendary label yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, they've done a lot. It's funny, like, as, like, a fan, when I heard that the Varma signed to the slate wall, it's like, oh, sick, they're, they're going to get a budget. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> right. It's going to sound sick. Right. But, uh, but uh, obviously, you know, I don't think he were in, in a band anymore at that point. It was just Ruben. Well, yeah. he did the second album, though, on Relapse, so. Yeah. Yeah. But the, what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, when, they, when you guys got signed. Yeah, I don't, I wasn't there when yeah. you got signed. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> well, they better get on your ass, but it's, it's, time, it's, it's time for a third record. What's it up? really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it agree. is. It's time. I think we're gonna. That's where we're gonna focus on the last half of this year. Is is the record? The, we were starting to do it a little bit at the end of last year, but then we got this tour and we got mm-hmm. a couple other shows in Asia and uh, Europe that mm-hmm. we got. We got to get out of the way and have fun with that. And then after that, I think we can narrow the focus a little more for the album stuff. Great. It's not shortcuts, huh? It's just like, man, this is going to take a while, but we just got to do it. Yeah. You know, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, at least the meat of stuff is, mm. is there, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not starting mm-hmm. from scratch, which yeah. is good. We're we're starting from a good good place because mm-hmm. we have a lot of stuff there. So, really, uh, I'm going to wrap up the uh, MT uh, talk. <laughs> so, we talked about, like, your influences right. for us starting the band and, uh, like, uh, Early nineties, when, when like, like when you were a kid, what were you listening to that wasn't metal? Okay, like obviously you have your suffocation. You're, you're listening to Dying Fetus. What were you listening to that that wasn't metal? John, what were you listening uh, to? You got like the Pee Wee Herman soundtrack. Yeah, from earlier. We were just listening to that. We were yeah. listening to Pee Wee yeah. Herman on the way Dan- here. Danny really? Elfman. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Elfman. We were listening to Ghetto Boys, yeah. Soundgarden. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I've always been one of those guys. It's like I mean, even when we start back in the '90s again, whatever. A lot of dudes were like doing the death metal thing. We're just like that's all I listen to. I'm just yeah. a death metal guy, 24 mm-hmm. seven. Mm-hmm. I've always been like, yeah, I, I didn't start on death metal, so I listened to everything. '80s pop, Madonna. You know, I love Lady Gaga. I love good pop music, good rap music, good. Pretty Texas sure. has some of the best rappers too. Like, really? They do, yeah, especially like, where I live in Houston. Houston Willie yeah. Ghetto Boys, yeah, yeah. just tons legit. of amazing. Just not Willie D, but what? <laughs> Willie D's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's Dirty South, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> yeah, that's Dirty South. <laughs> so that that explains a lot about your band. Like you just weren't listening to death metal like people think you're doing. I mean, like your right. friends were doing. You were actually, which kind of maybe like expanded like like your scope and perception of like 
uh, songwriting. Absolutely. That's exactly. Absolutely. It's 100%. That's exactly where I get, like, my ideas for, like, song structure and, yeah, it's pop music or well-crafted other types of genres. Oh, shit, dude. That's, and you put that in death metal riffs and it's like, it works. It's like, why wouldn't it work, right? Because it's the same idea instead of just, like, slapping riffs together. It's like, mm-hmm. when I listen to, you know, a Depeche Mode song or something, it takes me somewhere. It does a thing or something, you know? And I was like, I want that feeling, but I just want it heavy. <laughs> I just want, you know? Oh. Um, so that's why I was like, like I said, when you guys came out and stuff, and right oh, before yeah. you, all the new metal stuff, I was into. I was a huge Corn fan, Deftones fan stuff. Those songs are amazing. Whether you think they're metal or not metal enough or heavy, mm-hmm. the songs are there, dude. They know what they're doing. They're writing, and you can tell, especially with Corn songs or whatever. It's like there's a verse, chorus. It's very pop song structure. Right? Yeah, but and it works, which with heavy music, why wouldn't? <laughs> so just take those same ideas and apply them, and it's like you don't have to be. You know, just riff after riff. You can, and it works. Like, you know, there's some, some bands that, that do that, and it's, but that's not what I ever heard in my head when I'm trying to make a song or something. I hear a more, I don't want to say typical song structure, but, like, something that I'm familiar with that's hooky and catchy and, you know. You can be stuff. proud of in the end. Yeah. yeah, and like you said, that is, in the end, there to make you feel something and make you move and make you want to react and, you know, mm-hmm. kind of manipulate the, the listener, you know, like a good movie or tv show does you're manipulating the listeners or watchers emotions that's kind of the point of that kind of in you know art that you take in as a visual stimulus or an auto audio yeah. stimulus you know that explains a lot when you're like you know uh, you know that you know back in the day you're listening to you know fetus but you're also listening to the Peshmo, which makes you kind of find your own sound when exactly. you when, when you when you combine it with uh, with let's say Depan, obviously, and then uh, it's what a special time like we're talking like ninety eight, and you're writing like a one of the most important seminal records of our entire genre, right. while also like new metal is bubbling up, and you just you just described how like you know you you were a fan of Corn and Deftones, and uh, maybe it subconsciously had a influence. No, absolutely. Yeah, that because yeah, I remember that's, that's specifically insane. they were just like you said they were just coming out right at the time we were starting to do our thing too, because mm-hmm. I remember like like I said we were before we were huge embodiment fans right mm-hmm. and they were kids, and like we'd go watch them play a show and we'd help them load out their stuff or whatever and hang out and talk right mm-hmm. back to, and the guitar player they would have all these Corn and Deftone mm-hmm. stickers on their cars, Whoa. we were like wait a minute <laughs> what's wrong they're one of the most the best death metal bands I've ever seen they listen to Corn it's like you know most of the bands are like throw up their nose at that shit and we're like Mm. maybe there's something there (laughs) i was like yeah you know if the guys that make better music than we do think it's okay to do that or have some you know can take some influence away from that and and i just always have listened to every kind of music so um but not country because country can go fucking (laughs) (laughs) that's the one piece of songs that no one really kind of (laughs) well old country let's let's split hairs here here we go (laughs) I was pretty much raised on like classic country and bluegrass and you know Hank Williams old Hank Williams old Cash that stuff's cool um I not Shania into, Twain. I was huge into blues. Yeah, we're not. That's not country. You, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Modern country is bad pop music. Yeah, uh, oldies and stuff was a big deal for me growing up. I'm a huge Elvis fan. Elvis. Yeah. Oldies was my favorite music. Like when I was a kid, yeah. that's all I listened to. Was yeah, like fifties. Yeah, yeah. Oldies music. Same. Yeah. So um, we, we're starting to see the there relationship. You <laughs> there you go. Look at Elvis. Dude. Look at what? that dude. Wow. Look the that. king. So he's got, he is literally... He's got Ruben's hair, dude. <laughs> Look we got to win this Look, race. This is ripping right there, dude. Wow. Yeah. He is... He, <laughs> Look, there's, there's fat... Okay. There's, <laughs> <laughs> he's on the decline. There's fat but, cocaine Elvis. Holding it. Have you seen <laughs> that movie? Yeah. yeah I, I made just him watch watched it yesterday, 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 actually. With Tom Hanks? It's, it's pretty sick. It's pretty good. Yeah. I love it. Because yeah. I was just telling him, I was like, I love it. I like it as a movie, but especially those recreations of like the 68 comeback special. They like do shot for shot. Of like the you know the actual shows he played and stuff, yeah. it was so well done. I mm-hmm. was like, dude, I couldn't tell that's not Elvis. Yeah, there was backstories that I had no clue about, um, you know, that were answered uh, in the movie. So, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And then when they actually show the real Elvis in the end, that was pretty emotional, man. Yeah, did you cry? I might have teared up a yeah. little bit. Like yeah, a little, I did. Like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. Well, uh, there's. 
That's the king. The king. Yeah. He's still a king. Man. I guess. Uh, I guess the uh, to wrap it up. I mean, yeah, it's just. It doesn't matter how heavy you are or brutal you are. You got to be open-minded to, to mm-hmm. create your own sound. Yeah. You know, and have like a certain song flow. You know, that, that really explains a lot about about you guys and Thanks, why man. and why you're you're still here. Thanks, you know, man. Uh, I asked defeated like who do who do you think is like the heaviest fan <laughs> ever? And then your, your your name was brought up. You know? We saw that. Yeah, right? that's an honor. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, we're I mean, huge yeah, fans. Shout out to Defeated because those are our boys, yeah. man. Absolutely, we love those guys. Great, great guys. I mean, yeah, I mean, bands like uh, you know Suey like listen to you guys. You know, but, but what you like, Devarmit is literally like, if not the heaviest band on the planet, and you paved the way for for us and all, all these bands that are out right now. It would not be anywhere like without you guys you guys are like the goats to me for like the whole heavy genre thank you of, of like you know deathcore and all. and that's exciting because it's just you know people are still getting into deathcore and it's gonna they're just gonna find you guys like you know wait no like, right. it's cool you like us but this is where we came from like they, like, right. they, like they were playing slam if not heavier than us because right. it's funny how you're trying to you were like you're trying to do heavier stuff and, that, <laughs> and that's and that's what i'm doing to you you know it's just funny right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so like it, yeah. it's nuts but I mean I I, I I have to say this publicly I mean thank you for everything that you guys have done for heavy music and still still here writing music that, that we could look look forward to and jam you know thank you so much man yeah, dude absolutely. it's the it's ultimate compliment yeah. when somebody you admire as an artist mm-hmm. thinks you did something worthwhile as an artist you yeah. know what I mean so it's like that's that's all I've ever done this for and it's like and that I, I can't for ask for anything more from that. You know, it's like I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with this music, and like people. You, you appreciate didn't do it for revenge. I didn't. I'm sorry, Glenn <laughs> Ben. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not trying to get revenge. No, I was just. Uh, yeah, dude. And it's ultimately all for the fans. It is. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. for for people like me, just to jam and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So many people like you and other fans and other people that made created their bands that used us as some kind of platform to help them or have something to, you know, is the reason, you know, the music's still relevant, right? And mute metal is where it is and it's kind of mm-hmm. growing, it's kind of coming back and there's all these sick bands now and you guys are still killing it and like, you know, that's, like I said, that's just the coolest feeling, so. The goats. <laughs> <laughs> where, so where can people find you guys? Instagram. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Spotify. Yeah. Anywhere. Facebook. Uh, yeah. What's yeah. our website? <laughs> what is it? Devouramentofficial.com yeah. yeah. is our website. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. A little bit on Twitter. Not really. You can find us on tour too in May. Yeah. Yes. Uh, US thanks tour, for playing. Yeah. In yeah. May, Devouramment <clears throat> is touring with Ingested. They're all over. Let's see, uh, May 4th to June 4th, a full month. Yes. Mm-hmm. US Everywhere. And Canada. Florida. Fuck. Pennsylvania, <laughs> New York, Illinois, here in SoCal. Everywhere. You guys are going everywhere. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Trying. So check him out on tour with Ingested. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else is on it, actually? This is a sick lineup, dude. Yeah, it's um, Organectomy and... Uh, um, <clears throat> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the other one. Uh, uh, extermination. Extermination just Dismember, man. Yeah. And some uh, killer special guests on like parts of the tour. Oh, wow. I Pe- Declare War? Holy shit. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. I That's Declare War. badass. Peeling Flesh. Impulsive. Peeling Flesh is up and coming. They're yeah, they're a cool band. New band from Texas. Yeah. And uh, the TBA, you might be interested mm-hmm. in. Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. That's right. People may not be noticing that little TBA there. Oh, what is... Oh, shit. Might be another pretty cool band. Damn. That's fucking badass. Well, dude, I am literally... Again, like, I was going to... I was so pissed when I found out that we were, were going to be gone, and <laughs> right. I was like, I, I hit, I hit you up on on IGD. I'm so glad that this conversation worked out, and people could actually hear your your story and where and where you guys came from and where like the heavy genre came from. You know, yeah. So I think I think this conversation was was awesome. I learned a lot, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for for being here. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. And, uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Man. This was awesome. Man. Yeah. Thanks again.